Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special presentation done by Irene and Hugh. Irene will be doing most of the presentation and it's her work. It's about what is Dun and Bradstreet. The tragedy is that most people want to know and want to learn how to use it. But what is it? Well, Dun and Bradstreet records yourself, your home, your car, and including the whole of your country as being the collateral, collateral, I beg your pardon, for any damages that the stock market may occur, and the banks as well. In other words, your children, yourself, are actually listed as the liable parties to pay off your nation's debt, the bank's debt, or any other international uh, banks or corporations that are working in your country, as well as your country itself. Now that you've understood the potency of what I'm saying to you, that you are actually collateral and your homes are collateral, collateral, I should say, the horror of what we're going to describe should be very prominent to you. So I'm now going to hand it over to Irene and Hugh. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Irene. I'm in Ireland, in County Mead. And I just thought, um, I was always wondering how the, the government would come up with all these different agencies and everything. And I looked up thinking, well, if everybody who runs a business, most people, if you have a limited company, you have to be on the, uh, you know, the company registration uh, um, website and be registered with them. And I found out that why is the government of Ireland not on it? Why are all these government departments not on it? So it came to my intention that there was a company called Dunn and Bradstreet. And they are on the New York Stock Exchange. And all the government departments of Ireland, including the government of Ireland, are all registered on it as a business. See here, um, on here, it has um, doing business as the government of Ireland and that it's located in Dublin and all that kind of thing. So that got me wondering about all the other government departments. So I looked up um, number one, the Department of Justice. OK, that is a government body which um, is over all the courts and everything. And we have number two, the Court Service of Ireland doing business as the Court Service of Ireland. And here they actually generate $88.33 million in sales, US dollars, as they are um, on the New York Stock Exchange. And you kind of wonder how the hell do they do that? <laughs> it seems mad altogether because everybody would be under the assumption that when you vote all these people in, that they employ people to run the company in a public capacity, but they seem to be a private company or some kind of a company on the New York Stock Exchange and not on the Irish company registration um, file, you know, um, where you register it and they're not there. So, um, what's that one now? Here is a typical one here, which we um, is regularly brought up by Mark on his presentations about McDonald's restaurant. So they are on Dunn and Bradstreet as they are another company just like the Court Service of Ireland and Department of Finance. There's another one here, Land Registry. They are also on Dunn and Bradstreet. So you kind of wonder like, do you write to these people in their private capacity or do you write them into their public capacity? Like are they a, a private company or a public company? How do we get through to them? <laughs> no. um, this one here is um, the Department of Finance and Charlie McCready. Now, the funny thing is, about this is a lot of these people who are the key principal have already left politics. They're not even in government anymore, but their name still appears on these web, this website for some reason or other. It's never been updated. Don't know why. 
Um, oh, we, can we find out when it's yeah. been updated by scrolling down? It, it is on it, is it? It should be at the bottom. Yeah, okay. We start in 1924. Yeah. Um, Here's a bit about Dun & Bradstreet. If you look at Wikipedia, it's a corporation in New York. They're not registered in Ireland, but they're registered in, in, the, in the United States of America. You know, it's, so they're foreign to Ireland. You know, so that's basically my presumption of it, my interpretation. Would I be right in saying that basically virtually every country in the world can list, see themselves being listed? It appears to be. Well, I can answer that, Mark. Uh, hi, hi everyone, this is Judge Hugh from Terra Australis. Um, I've got uh, Dun & Bradstreet in uh, Australia. Uh, as well, uh, just to prove uh, to the audience that this is a global um, company. Uh, you've got the Dun & Bradstreet in um, three key locations in Terra Australis, Australia. One is in Queensland, uh, Western Australia, and I think uh, I think one in uh, Perth, uh, no, uh, Adelaide. So I've just looked up um, Department of Health and guess how much they are, like you can see how many subsidiary as well. I mean, I can share my screen and, and let the audience have a look, but just, just to give you some closure to that uh, global operation. Um, Department of Health Queensland, for example, generates 23.08 billion US a year, right? And it has 95 corporate subsidiary. So that's just one state health department. And I've looked up uh, other key departments, just like Irene, and yeah, they are doing business as. So um, it's actually quite useful because, uh, you know, there's a, a few free reports that you can have a look. They can drill down on, um, on the subsidiaries and a few other things. And, and the branches as well, like how many branches they have. So they're, they're free, free to have a look. But if you want to pay uh, for the reports, uh, you know, you can have a look at how deep and, you know, what they're involved in and, uh, you know, financial, specific financials, uh, things like that. Um, so, yeah. Can I... Over to you. Mm -hmm. Can I play the devil's, devil's advocate here? You know, and the reason why that is, is because you guys are saying these things to the audience and to me. And I have to put myself in a position as like a, a man or woman that knows nothing and what the significance of all this is. So the first question that comes up in my mind as a novice, you know, is like, yeah, OK, so what? What's the big deal? What's a big deal of countries making money? What's a big deal with that? What's a big deal with, you know, for paid, uh, for profit corporations and bureaucracies and government organizations? What's wrong with that? I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, a doctor well, treats people for making money for what they call, you know, compensation. So if he sees like a thousand patients in a year, I would expect him to make a couple of million for adequate compensation. So what's wrong with that? I, I don't I don't get it myself. Mark, here, here's what's wrong with it. Yes, a company uh, for profit is out to, to make, uh, you know, again, earnings for the shareholders and other stakeholders that has a, a, an interest in their security interest, financial interest and whatever it is, political, blah, blah, blah. But for the Queensland, <clears throat> like, for example, that Queensland uh, Health Department, you know, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, it's, it's a charitable, you know, it's a government agency it's supposed to benefit the community. And yet it's operating like a business, turning over billions of dollars per annum. 
with 95 other subsidiaries, that's, that's a huge operation. Um, so uh, while the sin here is, it, it gives uh, like on the front end, you know, the public, uh, the general public thinks that, you know, oh, you know, Department of Health, uh, one state, other state there, they're not really out, you know, make a profit. Uh, you know, it's more like a charitable, bene benevolent organization. Well, that's really hiding behind something, isn't it? Not to me, that's, that's my fault. But, but if you just look at it per se, it's, it's not a sin to uh, make profits because that's what, that's what they do. But, you know, they, they hide behind these other uh, social uh, things, you know. Um, that's one of them. Uh, and why, why is it so much profitable when it's just uh, health, you know? It should, should just be covering the cost and perhaps compensating um, people working there, but 23, that's a lot of profit. That's a lot of gains. So, so you start to wonder what, what is happening in that industry as well. So there's a lot of questions that leads on to many things and, and uh, you know, the pharmaceutical companies involved and things like that. I, I haven't even looked at the 95 subsidiaries. I mean, they, they could be using a reciprocal organization that would uh, benefit both ways, you know, uh, sourcing the uh, medicine as well as treating people. Yeah, you know, that's that's what I'm saying. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get some analysis going here in my mind. All right, okay, so in Queensland, the Department of Health there makes, how, how much did you say, billions? 20, roughly 23.08 billion US, not okay. Australian, US, US dollars. Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, US and they're measuring it US and it's and it's listed in the New York Stock Exchange, that means the New York Stock Exchange is the one that's owning and running the hospital in Australia for the Australian people. And the Australian people are not the financial beneficiaries of the profits that are being making um, are being made in Australia, but they're actually being channeled out of Australia and into the New York Stock Exchange. Would that be correct? It appears to be that way. And I, I, I have to drill down and have a look because everything is quoted in US dollars and uh, it's got that sort of global feel about it. No matter. Okay. Even though I'm going to, I'm going to ask uh, you and Irene a question because to be honest with you. Okay. Irene has pointed this out to me and you've pointed it out to me and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, what's the big deal? I, I still haven't been satisfied. So I'm going to, I'm going to lead this question on. Okay. Would the hospital in Queensland, just that Pacific, you know, Queensland area, Department of Health, is it profitable for them? to make sure that people are healthy or unhealthy? Wow, well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, um, well, logically, uh, and looking at this sort of um, from a business point of view, uh, you want to repeat business, right? I mean, uh, you know, food industry is the same thing. You know, people like that sort of consistent, regular, familiar, and it sort of tastes nice and you know, repeat. So, I, which is why some of the food chains are so so profitable. For example, so so with this department, why is it so profitable? It has to do a repeat. So, how do you if you cure someone like completely, they what be a repeat if you even if you charge them so much, you can only charge them so much. But if it's a repeat, then it's you've got a good customer base, just like customer loyalty, but are done on a, a very uh, different way. So um, to understand it, you know, I think we need to drill down on their subsidiaries. You know, what I'm saying, uh, see what what companies Q, are involved. Q. I, I personally don't think you've answered my question. I want an answer. 
is it more a... profitable is it more profitable for the queensland department of health to have a healthy queensland people or an unhealthy which one is more profitable is what i want a direct answer to unhealthy and so if you folks in queensland started to grow your own vegetables or bought organic vegetables and got yourself healthy would the department of health now see you and your lifetime your life change behavior as being detrimental to their for profit making business ie department of health of queensland i can answer that for the people the answer is yes resounding yes it's a it's a competition so uh, would it be of interest to them to make sure that they collaborate with the food industry the pharmaceutical industry with the mass media and also with petroleum dollar with also petrol pollution and all of these things in order to calibrate and engineer sick people for profit for profit correct <clears throat> that that ties okay. in with a business plan okay all right so let's imagine that there is conspiratorial works going on and we have titles for that but remind me what that title is in the US when people conspire uh i'll i'll give it to you in a second mark yeah sure i'm i'm happy to wait Um, title uh, U.S. Code, Title 18, Section 371. Conspiracy. Conspiracy okay. to defraud. Okay. All right. So let's create another scenario. The Department of Health hasn't been successful in making people sick in the the territory of Queensland or state of Queensland or province are there psychological means by which they can make people sick like debt and it's a leading question like mortgages like geoengineering to put people in hardship flooding fires well well is there any limits on what a corporation can do to the people on it to strip them of their life energy their health is there any limit is there any cap on this is there any cap Hugh on them making profits like you know if i was intelligent i would say look you can only make profit in order to facilitate the running of the hospital for like 3 4 years at a time just in case crisis turns up but everything else needs to be plowed back into the investment of making people healthy so we essentially will become useless do they have that sort of self fail safes in can they make like 1 trillion dollars if they wanted to there there is no uh rule uh for the limits uh it's just uh the distribution of it maybe okay. uh maybe regulated but uh and then from there on you know it goes through that other reporting but there is no limit for how much they make Tell me, is the Department of Health also responsible for psychiatric care, people with mental breakdowns and things? Yes. Okay. So, if they decided to put up the interest rates for the mortgages and people can't mm. afford to pay it because they've just gone through two years of shutdown and also a year of fire and now of course flooding and of course they haven't paid any of the mortgages as it were would that be considered a, a a reasonable tool in which to make people financially sick it 
I believe that it will create um, a lot of issues for them to use their services and to come back uh, and even bring up new ones that hasn't been so active before. Okay, I have another question. Are you a shareholder of a Department of Health? Are you one of those stockholders? Well, not financially. Uh, I don't have any shares in the, the ones. Who, it who is the shareholder? Really... Who is the shareholder? Perhaps I can ask Irene. <laughs> who yeah, are the um... shareholders? Who's making a profit, Irene? The people <clears throat> at the top. Who? Well, the government, the government of Ireland would be the, the top of the pecking order, I think, and all the companies and the these would all be subsidiaries, maybe all the different departments of the government of Ireland under a different company name. I Show me, please. Show me about Ireland. Let's have a look. Um, the government of Ireland. Um, so who is the owner of government of Ireland? Is it the yeah. Irish people? Uh, um, you know, we reckon it would be if we vote them in. You know, we reckon that they're working in our, in our best interest. You know, I, I need a direct answer. I'm not yeah. philosophical. You know, you're going to have to tell me, have you ever been the beneficiary of any of the stuff that Ireland produces as a corporation? No, not particularly. Not, not for free, anyway. Would it be of interest... For them to bankrupt everybody in Ireland to take your money away and your houses away and your health away. Yes, it would. Yeah. Is that the history that you have now witnessed in Ireland for the past hundred years or so, or ninety nine years? Yes, and definitely happening now because a lot of people haven't paid their mortgages and the vulture funds are in now. They're rampant, you know, stealing people's properties at the moment, and my, the the health would be definitely affected by people. You know, the mental health and all that and then the pharmaceutical companies would be making big money promoting their products to the doctors to give out on prescription and it's a big chain i look i think i get it i think hugh has explained it and i think you have now explained it what's what's uh annoying me and i'm getting annoyed is that i don't think the irish people are completely ignorant of this i don't think the australian people are ignorant of this I have seen people do presentations on Drun and Bradstreet for nearly like one, one, 10 years, 15 years even. And what have they done about it? What have the Australians and Irish people done? Have they got together and sacked their government? Have they told the courts that we are not for profit? I mean, like, am I imagining this or are people just sleepwalking? Or perhaps they're cowards. Am I dealing with cowards, a nation full of cowards? Uh, uh, no, there are very courageous people now and there's a movement going on, I believe, Mark. Uh, I'm hearing it from my network and intelligence. And um, it's just getting all that confusion out of the way. And this done in Bradstreet and what Irene's found and your leading questions uh, are, are clearing up that confusion between the public and the private. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, you mentioned the 99 years. It's interesting, Mark, because just, just this uh, Department of Health in Queensland, it, it started off a, a, as like, uh, you know, normally as a the benevolent uh, in 1901, which is when uh, the uh, constitution started in Australia, all the states, and then it got incorporated in 1999 which basically 99 years later starting and that's how it is to now. So it got incorporated or incorporated in 1999. So that's 99 years after the initial, you know, calling in of it as a, as a department of health government organization. So what's the significance of 99 years, Mark? Well, that's the feudal law system of, uh, of leaseholds, 99 years and 125 wow. years is what the feudal lords use uh, to lease out their lands. 
that includes corporations and so on and so forth. So after the lease ran out on it, they incorporated it. What do people know what incorporated means? It means to for actually to go overseas. I would like yes. to go back. I would like, look, you know, Irene has explained to me that their court systems are not jury systems. You know, it's not like 12 men and women coming together around a table to give their fiduciary, you know, uh, findings on what this is. It looks like it's totally for profit. The sole purpose of it is to remove people's houses, kick them out, and it's done by a, a few group of people in Ireland, in Australia, and the whole of Australian people can't get together, and the Irish people can't get together and put them to bay. The Irish people can't come out and say, hey, F off your court system. They can't get their toilet paper out and, you know, wipe their backsides in front of it and offer it to them. What are they, sheep? Obviously, I think they are. You know, when you tolerate, when you tolerate intolerable things, I have to pass sentence on you folks. You're bloody sheep. Obviously, you are. You are sheep. I mean, am I being out of order of saying that? Well, well, Irene can say something, and I. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of sheep in our country. No disrespect to anyone, but um, we had a voting there. No, for our elections there two years ago in February of 2020. 2020. Um, just before lockdown and it took months for them to form a government and the people who were actually voted in didn't get into power the other they were kind of hijacked by the other political parties and they're in government running the so country. that that tells you your vote does not matter just yeah. as in the us as the can we change this picture irene i think you've got yeah. some other bits and pieces like a youtube yeah, or something um, there So essentially, they're using the same McDonald's corporate instruments. Yeah, like we're no different than any other company. You know, like any so other company. I, I think, I think you know, I, I have to be judgmental. I'm going to have to be judgmental. I think the Irish people are like uh, a cheeseburger <laughs> with a cheeseburger with a, a receipt. <laughs> that's yeah, all. Okay. And that's their contract. And they and that's their receipt of the proof that they bought hamburger. Mm. I think that's how I'm going to see the Irish people from now on. I I don't have any respect for people like that. Yeah. What What about new Australian people, Hugh? Are they sheep as well? A lot of them are, Mark. They they still believe in the the, the main narrative, the the media, the, the main media and stuff. But they create that landscape for them. Okay. But when they actually look at behind the scene, the fabric of it, and, and follow the money, then they realize it's not what they it is all out, out to be. That's all I want to say. All right. Look, I want to I want to put this scenario out for for people to visualize the accuracy of what you are saying and what we're saying. McDonald's has decided to open up court in their McDonald's restaurant called a McDonald's restaurant court. And they're going to summons people in within a 12 mile radius of that McDonald's uh, restaurant using McDonald's receipts as their bills of lading. And they're going to make sure that you come to court and summons you with that receipt for a Big Mac or a McDonald beef burger, whatever you call it. And if you don't turn up, they'll try to get the police or the guarder to come and knock, knock on your door on behalf of McDonald's to drag you in to be tried by, by Ronnie McDonald. I nearly swore there. This is what you are telling me. This is what you're telling me, that 
that Ronnie MacDonald as the judge is holding court in a McDonald's restaurant, as a McDonald's restaurant, and the summonses are the bills of the ladings as receipts out of a till, another word for a bank is a till, another word for a bench is a till, and they're holding court there, a corporation with cartoons, Ronnie McDonald's wearing their uniform, is actually harvesting the whole people of Ireland and Australia and England and the US and Canada and not one of you can do anything about it? What the, what the hell, man? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? No, I'm insulted. I'm insulted. I'm not dealing with men and women. I'm dealing mm. with bloody man, you know, these are, where, where is the behavior, the conduct of men and women? So, uh, I can't I think see was, it. Like that example, uh, yeah, sounds very comical, but in, in reality, uh, it's called an administrative court. It's, it's not, it's a, you know, vessel and dry dock. And it's a foreign As, Excuse me, Hugh, excuse yes. me. Excuse me. Yes. Irene just told me that people are losing their homes, just as the Canadians tell me and the uh, Australians and the New Zealands and the Americans tell me they're losing their homes to administrative court. So it doesn't matter if it's a McDonald's administrative court or if it's the goddamn Supreme Court of the Martians, they're still losing their bloody homes. Hmm. You know, what, what am I dealing with here? I can't, myself, I cannot believe, okay, I cannot believe men have become so sheepish that they can be summoned into a McDonald's restaurant by Ronnie McDonald. That's just absurd, man. That's absurd. Mm. Wow. That's absurd. <clears throat> Well, wow. it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's certainly a, a very uh, funny, kind of absurd, but crazy. But uh, this, is, it ha this happens every single day. And, uh, you know, I guess the confusion is that the, they, they'll make it look so real and so official, Mark. You know, uh, but hopefully when, today when we analyze all these doing business as uh, governmental, uh, supposedly governmental agencies, and then perhaps this knowledge to the people can can sort of take them out of the sheep mentality and just follow the orders all the time when they need to question everything. Questioning everything is not is not something you know to to shy away from. It's, it's, it's encouraged. Look, I'm looking at the Dun and Bradstreet for. Irene, uh, Department of Justice, and it's got there, the industry, not the bureaucracy or the governance, the industry, executive, legislative, and other general government support, public administrators. Wow. Sounds sound you know, very commercial, isn't it, Mark? Sound it's it's commercial. totally commercial. Yeah. Mm. Have it all wrapped up. <laughs> so, you know, so, I'm very, very thankful to you and Hugh Hugh and <laughs> Irene for showing us. But I, I don't feel good inside, man. I, I don't feel good. You know, I'm a plan potential judge and I've done some bloody things, you know. And well, I, I don't my, my stomach my stomach is, is left me. I I feel gutted, mm. as the cockneys round here would say. I feel gutted because Lord Almighty, how do I put yeah. it? How do I put it? They're frightened of bloody McDonald, Ronnie McDonald. They're frightened of Ronnie bloody McDonald. You haven't sacked your Supreme Court judge. You haven't told them, even though I shared the most important piece of kit of how to squash all of these things. What have the Irish people done with it? What has the Australian people done with it? Yeah.
Mm. It's like psychologically, God damn, they are dumb, man. God damn, they're going to get themselves hurt. And you know what? From their conduct, from their behavior and self neglect, what what do they expect? Do you know how many times I've been in Ireland to form groups? And you know the buggers attack me. They don't attack the rapists, but they attack me. They don't attack their government, but they attack me. These things need to be pointed out as psychological, how screwed up people really are. You know, no wonder why Ronnie McDonald has a free range in Australia, America, Canada, Ireland, uh, yeah. Great Britain, United Kingdom, France, Spain. They're everywhere. <laughs> Just like the courts, um, administrative courts and other industry, the government departments, they're everywhere and uh, doing business as. And um, look, I don't know how many people are watching this. OK. Let's let's have a look how many people are watching it. I, I can take a guess, I suppose. Just under 500 people are watching watching this. I gave them solutions to this for the Canadians. I gave and that is applicable to every single country in the world. Out of a stroke of a pen, you can put these corporations exactly where they are. If the Irish people, if the Australian people cannot pick themselves up for the purposes of sacking this this freakish thing that is occurring to them, then of course they deserve everything they're gonna get. If you if you witness your wife being raped and you're too cowardly to do anything about it, at least go and bloody get some help. You know? True. True. That's that's what I'm visualizing and it's this is making me quite angry. Not angry at the rapist, but angry at the passiv passivity of the people themselves. You know? Yeah. Irene and has you... given us 100% proof that this is a McDonald's corporation that is using you as the collateral for everything banking, your health. The whole thing is one massive corruption and the industry has corrupted your blood your children your minds your neural networks your internet your media your television stations corrupted every single thing and can i just add one other piece of information if you will and they're probably investing the mutual funds in this company as well. What does that mean, Hugh? The mutual funds, Mark. I'm, I'm ignorant, man. <laughs> I'm, I chew on grass, yeah? I chew on grass. What are you saying to me? I have no security idea. In the securities, you've talked about the creditors and the securities, Mark. Yes? Uh, in the previous uh, talks, and I was on there, you talked about the security. We are the security. Remember you said? <laughs> well, those funds are being, you know. Hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Hugh. I mean, look, uh, are you telling <laughs> me, are you telling me the sheep are the security for the farmer? Yes. It's that simple? Yeah. And they've invested in these health companies, uh, these industries. Yeah, that's right, these industries. Now, I, I know farmers, and I think if sheep can give wool for about seven years. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, after, uh, yeah. after that, the sheep now becomes mutton. So you yeah, don't get to. Process. Yeah, it goes through that process. Different so uses. after you after you've bled, gave up your wool. You now go to slaughterhouse to feed the farmer and his wife. I get it. It's just farming. It's just farming. That's all. Yeah. And the and human the, beings are the sheep. Yeah. 
the intensity gets, you know, more and more as it progresses down the conveyor belt, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. Do we, do we have a solution for this, you? Yes, you've already given to them <laughs> in previous videos. And you can, want, you can mention them again or give links to that, to that effect so that people can say, oh, okay, let's do this. I can't convince them anymore. We've already given proofs. You know, um, this is just I, one I of them. It. I mean, yeah, this is this is uh, this one's like really practically. If, if anyone's you know saying, oh, you know, you guys are this and you guys are that, you're overreacting. This is not like that. Well, just have a look. Just slip around down in Bradstreet, and you'll be convinced. If you can just read a bit of uh, financial reports, I'm sure everyone has literacy in numbers and what what profit means and what earnings and stuff means, um, they'll get it, you know, they can connect Hugh, that. Yeah. Hugh, if I, if I was to use your family as the means to make them sick so I can make a profit by me treating their sickness and keeping them sickness, what would you do to me as a man? I will be... Uh... I will uh, seek um, damages from you because you've harmed my family. Okay, I'll pay it as long as I get a little profit out of it. What is it you want? A million? I'll pay it. Pay it. <clears throat> I'll pay it. Yeah. I've compensated you. It's a million pounds. So what's the problem? I've made one thousand, one million and two hundred thousand. I keep the two hundred thousand. I pay you the million as compensation. Okay, it's a good deal. Your family is cheap. Thank you very much. I've made two hundred thousand pound profit. Thank you, or maybe, dollars uh, profit. Maybe I should take you out totally, Mark. Like, like, but, <laughs> like, what do you mean, take me out? What are you going to do about it? Stop your operation. What? How? Because, how are you going to do you, that? Well, well, that I'll come back in a moment. I'll give you a reason why I should take you out, or take the, whatever you're doing, because you're going to do it to another living soul. So okay. anybody, anybody stopping anybody else from doing the correct thing, like the police, constables, the sheriffs, the Garda, are actually war criminals, and you can put them under arrest because you've got no choice but to put them under arrest because they're aiding and abetting murder. Yes. Not killing, not killing, murder. Murder. That's what I would thing? say. If you don't put these people under arrest, if you don't want to do the paperwork, then you're going to have to do something. Otherwise, you know, your children are going to be very healthy looking profits because what do organs sell for? A what does a kidney money. sell for? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Like a, a pint of blood. You know, they think the pint of blood is not stole, uh, sold on the open market. Go and look at the commodities, commodities list that are traded, blood is within the 12 most products sold last time I looked. Well, and Got... they're, they're asking for free donation a lot. I wonder we can look up uh, the Red Blood Cross uh, organization. Please do. That. Please do. Yeah. Let the audience do it. You know, let the... Look, yeah. Irene, Irene, is there, is there anything in Ireland that's even worth mentioning here at this moment. Um, just that um, they're working, all these government bodies are working on assumption and presumption that you're going to contract with them. So you have to rebut them with that letter and telling them that they've no authority over you as such. You know, the letter you were talking about? Yeah. We have to write to the departments on saying, well, can't be doing this. You know, you have to um, show that we are not part of that legal person that is um, like another company. Like we're being a person, if you're is another company or whatever, you know, like a company is a legal person and they're treating us like legal persons in order to contract with us. So okay. we have to remove that assumption and presumption. Okay. So I think this is something that we spoke about late last time. Yeah. And that, that's called bar, uh, personage and barratry. Yeah. 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 So they created alternative personalities for the Irish, American, Canadians, 
Australians and some of these alternative personalities is called Catholic. Some of these alternative personalities is called Anglican, Protestant and other alternative personalities is called the variety of religions that go around which are all part of that personage as well as the pseudonyms and the attitudes that they take on that I am this or I am that and the variety of names called legal fiction names that they've taken custody over uh, allowed the banks to take custody over because they thought, oh, that's a good deal for now. And they throw, you know, they, they played a blind eye to it. They were so convinced, I remember in the 90s, that the IRA will solve their problems, only to find it was this MI5 that created the IRA and running it, just as the Royal, uh, Royal uh, Ulster's Union, I think, their you know, opposition. I, I am totally, you know, I totally, completely understand that these people are just alternative personalities called personages because they watch the telly, they watch the religious buffoons, you know, and they take on their personalities. And once they do that, they're very happy to take up other legal fictitious names that they don't have custody over and find themselves. These, these legal personages were created by Ronald McDonald out of a Burger King store. And now Ronald McDonald's want the name back. And they bring you in court called Bartery. That's when they bring charges against a legal fiction name that you signed up to you know because you thought you'd be so financially cool or so wickedly cool as a rapper would do in the US and just simply realize that all you've done is totally and utterly flush down your manhood and your womanhood down the toilet for a personage an actor's mask and that's just the truth of it. And that's just the truth of it. And that's the tragedy of all of this, is that they've basically picked up every single lie. And what does it matter that they picked up a false name? They are victims of baratry and personage. Yeah. So I personally don't think... Ja Irene, that people actually know the difference between a man and a woman, uh, a religious man or a woman, a Catholic, a Protestant. They actually, I don't think any of them actually know they're just legal names, artificial persons. They don't, they don't know because it was man-made. It was created. Yep. Yeah, I don't think any of them know, and that's the tragedy of it all. I am all doom and gloom today, Irene and <laughs> you, because ah. they got to understand, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's horror, man. It's horror what you guys are describing. And mm. I feel really upset. And I'm wondering if anybody else feels upset listening to this. Or are they just kind of saying, oh, well, it's, you know, can't do anything about it, you know. It's just the government. What can I possibly do? All this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's the way you're educated in school, you know, like to submit to all these government bodies and the courts and everything. Just the way we're brought up. The education mm. system. Yeah. Look, uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no I, I concur with uh, Irene. You know, they... They, they always frown on the one that's sort of out of line or something that's, you know, different in the group. So it's always conformity, conformity, conformity. So this, this needs to be broken out, you know, and Mark, you, you know, this video with us doing this and Irene and other videos together, you know, through the years would hopefully uh, break that mold. Um, you know, not trying to stir up trouble here. We're just trying to ask questions and looking at the facts. You know, these uh, Dun and Bradstreet is a yeah. good start. You know, we're not trying to. Uh, you know, I am causing. I am. What do you mean you are? I'm going to set this whole goddamn thing on fire. 
I'm going to come after every single one of these freaks. And my intention with zero tolerance is to do exactly with them what they should, should be done. These things carry a death penalty. You know that mm -hmm. and I know that. It's part of zero tolerance. Look, yeah. look what it says here. Legislative, executive legislatives and other general government support industry, Department of Justice as 45 total employees, to 45 total employees across all its locations and generates 5.93 million in sales, US dollars. Employees and sales figures are modified. There Mother. are 566 companies in the government of justice corporate family corporate wow. family as it's, as it's to opposed family. to political family which means family of politics and it's all written in all capitals which means it's ronald mcdonald can you turn to the ronald mcdonald one please irene yes. and let people yeah. see what the corporate instruments look like Okay. Yeah, it's written in all capitals, McDonald's Restaurants of Ireland Limited. It's the same thing. Dublin, Ireland. Dublin is written in all capitals, so it's corporate. Ireland is written in upper and lower case, which is also corporate, and it's not in IRA, which is I, which is R I, uh, E I R E. Sorry, say that again. E father I R E. Era. How do you pronounce that? Era. So McDonald's is not in era. Mm -hmm. No, but where's era then? That's Ireland, Irish for Ireland. Yeah. Oh, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. That's like me saying I live in England and Great Britain and United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I can live in all three jurisdictions mm -hmm. at one place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we get it, Mark. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> McDonald's. So, look, the summonses are nothing more than McDonald's receipts. That's all. For what they consider to be unpaid bills. Somebody's gone and ordered a Ronald McDonald cheeseburger and forgot to pay for it. So they're going to summons you into court and steal your home because somebody forgot to pay the restaurant bill. Oh, I like that goddamn deal. I'm in the wrong business. I'm going to set up a Ronald McDonald business in Ireland, Canada, and I'm going to charge everybody for not paying their bill and take their homes off of them. That's a bloody good job. Perhaps I'll recruit people. I'll perhaps hire the Garda, right? Eh? Perhaps the Garda will support me doing this. <laughs> Yeah. Look, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm actually telling you the actual truth of how these goddamn things work. And it's damned. They are damned. Yeah. <laughs> Dublin Island McDonald's Restaurants and Islands Limited has 1,258 employees at its at this location and generates 57 million in sales US dollars. Employees figures estimated. There are 3,000 uh, 820 companies in the McDonald's Restaurants of Ireland Limited corporate family. Wow. It's quite inc incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah there are 120, uh, 1,258 employees servicing 3,820 companies. Yeah. yeah. How the hell is that even possible? Obviously. <laughs> Obviously, they slice them in, up in like 15, 16 pieces <laughs> and they send them around, you know, yeah. <laughs> which means uh, they're actually hiring people that are not even considered humans or even uh, uh -huh. man or woman. Yeah. Wow. And uh, what do Irish people do? They go and take their children to McDonald's for breakfast, after school lunch, whole bloody thing, just like the Americans, Canadians. Australians and stuff. Make them unfit. <laughs> Make yeah. them unfit and sick, and then they depend on the hospitals again. Back to that again. Yeah. Look, uh, these are all zero tolerance, and uh, 
Well, that the, is the... the employees mark, it's roughly on average uh, three heads per, per location, but I'm sure that they have uh, casuals and uh, temporary staff in between. So they just may well be the managers <clears throat> for those locations. You know, the one that actually, uh, you know, high and fire. So it's quite reasonable, uh, three, three per, per location. You know, it's a heavy traffic. So I'm sure there's more than three because, you know, you can't have uh, three people working in that restaurant because someone has to make the burgers. Someone has to call the orders, you know, drive through all that kind of thing. So, but that's the key, key uh, staff that, that actually hires and fires. You've got the casuals, which not, might not be counted in the model. So, yeah. But still, you know, this is, this is a, a huge organization. And that's just one of them. I mean, there's, you've got Australia. It seems to me that the health industry is very profitable. <laughs> They're all in the billions of dollars, believe it or not. US. So, yeah. So I say this in conclusion, in my, in my uh, looking at this, it's like a machine, right? Cogs and webs put together in every industry to go to, a, you know, to, their, to their objectives. And, and each one of them work in, you, in, in, in unison, in connection to that. And it's not to benefit um, you know, the community or the people because the business model is, is corrupt, as you say, from the, from the very start. So that's why you're so passionate about letting them go. Yes. I would like to share something. You know, in uh, uh, Miripol, Paul, Miripol, Mar Maripol, in the Ukraine, where most of the fighting is taking place. You know, we have videos of people making videos saying there is no bloody war here. There are no missiles firing, but the de facto government has armed criminals. And those criminals are using those guns to terrorize the local people by stealing and raping people. And that type of government is the government of Ireland, of Canada, Australia. You, you guys understand what I'm saying to you. This thing that you're looking at in, our, in Ukraine yeah. is just feeding lies to you day and night to keep you in the world of lies. They're telling you the Martians are coming where there is no bloody Martians. They're telling you that the Muslims are coming when they're actually asleep in a different continent. Mm. The profound lies of these people, like the Supreme Court and the piece of donkey shits calling themselves uh, judges, are nothing more than something that you should be wiping your backsides on. That's your service that they should be providing for you. Wipe your asses for you. That's, that's what they used for. That's what they should be using. And you need to deal with them in that way. It's called zero tolerance. Never, never tolerate wicked people and wicked things. These people need to go to prison. And that's what you need to work towards. That's the people in the world. Look. Watch this. Uh... Are you guys able to see my screen? Not yet. Irene, you might have to let... I could um, stop sharing. I can press that. Screen. Yes, please. Stop sharing. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and share your screen, Mark. Are you able to see this? Not yet. This uh, webcam? Yeah, I see your face. Yes. To see you. <clears throat> The, oh, you just see me okay audience can you tell me if, if i'm screen sharing with you are, are you able to see just me and a thing called uh webcam can you speak to me audience see 
So can you see where it's got Mount Welt webcams.com? Speak to me. All yes, they can. Okay. Now look at this. Look at this. Okay. This is a, a doctor, and I, I haven't qualified it. Is 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 in that part of the world? Okay, called uh, Miripul, a uh, M A R I U P O L in Ukraine, where all the war is being fought, as the BBC is describing. He's there, and I wish I could play it for you. So he's basically saying, "I'm walking on the streets." There is no gunfire, there's no Russians, there's no nothing. But it looks like the Russians are there to protect people which they have not even entered the country. It's just a fucking... It's just a game show. And the courts are just a game show. Your government is a game show. They're not your government. Yeah. They're not your government. They're, they're just a piece of dog feces that you picked up on the on on your shoe on the way from home. Zero tolerance will put you in your mind to be able to deal with them. Okay, this is a webcam. All right, this webcam is where the BBC and everybody is saying is actually taking place the war, and this is a live webcam. It's a live webcam. Listen to it. Look at it. Just go to the address, type it in yourself, what city it is, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cameras overlooking the city, which is live. Okay, and it's got sound on it. And as you can see, the entire city is war torn. I can even see thousands of missiles being fl fired at. Or am I imagining these things? What does a webcam say? The BBC tells me there is heavy gunfire, helicopters being shot down. Let's look for some helicopters, guys. Come on, help me out here. Oh, the streets look a bit empty. It rather looks like a mediocre place to live, even. Oh, there's a car. Look, there's a car. I spotted a car. Your Are government, you yeah, your government, ladies and gentlemen, is just like the BBC. Your government, your court system, the judges are just like all of these dog feces stuck to your shoe. Zero tolerance tells you what to do. Get together, sack those bloody asses. Otherwise, I'm going to still look upon you as nothing more than cowards. I had to do it myself for myself without getting into groups and every single one of them sitting here Irene and Hugh had to do it for themselves without relying on other people yeah yeah and we are not special we're just men so I'm making it clear there's the life plan every goddamn television station newspaper is lying they're lying they're lying to you so Mark uh just for the audience uh if, if they're lying to uh, uh the audience and and creating this so false flags what's the purpose behind that is is there an agenda here it's just let, oh very you know, easy very easy give closure to that you know you, you see say, oh yeah i can give that closure once you believe a lie then you're sold the lie that the court system is for real and you treat it as real because anybody wow. that believes a lie is susceptible to another lie and another lie and another lie. And the whole world believes that the politicians are corrupt. No, they're not corrupt. They're bloody actors, for God's sakes. They've proven that to you. They believe that the banks are taking over the world. They're a bloody cartoon. They've got nothing to take over the world with but to get you to believe that they've taken over the world. They get you to believe that the Supreme Court is written to you to say that they're going to take your house off of you. As long as you believe it, it works. But there are factual devices, factual conduits, factual ways of doing things that bypass the world of fiction. 
and cameras like this prove 100. Do you, you guys know what 100% looks? Because I think you guys are numerators, enumerate as well. That's the, you know, that's the, the, the bloody people out there. Not you subscribers, because you guys know what's happening. That, what, that's 100%. One, zero, zero, zero with a percentage sign at the end of it. Proof that the BBC, Fox News, ABC, TCP, what goddamn thing that you can think of are all lying to you. You know the 101 idiots on YouTube that talk to you about, obviously Russia has gone too far invading Ukraine. They've bought into the lie, and what they're doing is they're narrating the lie for you as if it's real. The reason why the gold prices are going up is because World War Three is imminent, because Russia might launch nuclear weapons. Russia doesn't have weapons. It has armaments. Three to four times more superior than any weapon. Wow. Yeah. That's how you know when fiction talks fiction. All these experts that you're following on YouTube, they're bums, man. Mm -hmm. Because they've bought into the narrative that there is a war going on. Am I, am I, am I speaking mm -hmm. to myself? What, what is this? No, 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 it's okay. <clears throat> Look, uh, people are getting is... it. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that closure. Oh, look at look um, at this. Oh my God! There's a man walking there in the middle of a war zone, on a zebra crossing. Obviously, this guy is mad. Is there a date stamp on that? Uh, uh, yeah. Date and time stamp on it, Mark. Yeah. yeah. There it is. It's all here. Okay. Live time date stamp. Let me see if I can blow up the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, let's have a look. There's the date stamp on it and also the time live. Each okay. camera has its own each camera has its own time date stamp on it. Like this one, 21 hours 03 22 date 22 and 35 minutes or 5 seconds or something. Yeah. And people can go. just go and watch it. There you go, folks. That's yeah. proof to you. Here's another timestamp. You know, my God, this looks really does look like a war zone. <laughs> Purely yeah. in your imagination. Look, uh, Hugh, I hopefully I've not been too hard on people. You know, I've hopefully I've not been too hard. But I do hope that I've I've got a great big baseball bat and I smashed it over their head to say, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think I think human beings are beyond slapping. You know, they need a lot more than that a good slap around their face. It's obvious to me. Yeah, yeah. because uh, the the lies and the, um, you know, the, the deception is so, so heavy. And the sleep is so so much that you need that sort of hardness. Not nothing personal, okay? Nothing personal. Oh, it's very personal for me. Very. It personal. is. <laughs> it's very well, personal. Well, we're, you, you're just yeah. We you're doing this, and we're doing this because we we feel passionate about uh, you know getting people to this is, move over look, to the other side. <laughs> you know, as as the Americans would say, you know, I've I've got a dog in this fight. I've got skin in this game. So does Irene and so do you. I've put my entire life's energy into this, my entire life's savings into this. I, know, I put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, I put my face where my word is. You know, of course it's personal for us. You know that. <laughs> no, I meant on the other side, not, not you. Oh, okay, the other side, yeah. The other side, no. We're, we're saying this and you're saying this and that some people might take it as an offense you know I, I i hope they do i hope they do but but it's sort of uh waking their their inner self up you know you, so they say when you get angry you know some something is happening which is good <laughs> uh 
uh, you know, either you're mad, you're sad, or you're glad. That's it. <laughs> uh, we we have given them reasons to be angry. We have re given them reasons to you know to be happy by the solutions that we have given them to the world. We've given them reasons to wake up reasons to look after your, their babies and their children for their countries and it is and if they don't do anything about it they are not men and they are not women and uh, the world will not tolerate people that are not men and women you are you will just become extinct yeah uh, so Irene any uh, concluding remarks <laughs> uh, comments I think everything's all said. Well, just have to wake yeah. up, everybody, and go forward and progress. Hopefully, <laughs> has anybody outrageous. tried to? Sorry, Hugh. Has anybody tried to uh, uh, arrest and find out where that prime minister or president in your country lives? Because it's a small country, you should know where everybody lives, including the judges. Has anybody knocked them on their doors and claimed? that this is a public-private partnership and put those asses on arrest and called the coroner to have them arrested? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But people are afraid of the Gardaí and the guard of Shikana. Has anybody tried to put the guard under arrest for harboring uh, criminality, rapist? It's going to happen. Mm, it has to happen. Some, someone, someone it's, will respond. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. I, I promise you this. And remember, I'm putting my face and my word online. Within the next 10 days, things are going to change so badly for these governments. You're going to see mass arrests by the people taking place. The politicians will be defecating and their defecation on the streets is what the people are going to be using to track them down. They mm. know their days are numbered, yeah, and they're hours away. The mass arrests that are going to take, you know, this is going to be, we've seen quite extraordinary periods in just in the last two years. You know, when I showed them wow. the existence of gods are not mythological but factual because they got bank accounts and then gave them the bank account details. That woke people up. That. The Irish government think that they're going to run away to some mysterious island or run away to some subterranean uh, bunker. <laughs> they're not. The people are going to hang them, man. Because you can only push somebody for so far until they realize, no, stops here. What you, did, what you have done is a hangable offense. And we mm. brought the rope along with us. Yes. That's that's obvious for me when I speak to my students all over the world. Yeah. You know, so my intention was not to be negative, but my intention was to say to people, your passivity will kill you. Doing something will set you free. We've given you the tools to be able to do what you need to do. And I've given it to you at my great cost as a free gift to people. Okay. Don't abuse it. Don't abuse me. Otherwise, I'll come after you. As you know, the people are blood ignorant and they can easily become the worst enemy of good people, just as they can become the worst enemy of bad people. You have choices before your eyes and you have choices before your mind, your vision, your future, your houses and homes. Do the goddamn right thing and do something, yeah? Mm. Anything is better than nothing. Yes. Thank you very much, Irene. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Hugh. How are you? I think we have successfully conveyed to people that their governments are nothing more than McDonald's restaurants selling hamburger and sending out summonses, which are nothing more than receipts, till receipts 
out of a McDonald's store. That's all that these legal instruments are. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you very much. You know, I'm going to pray, as it were, psychologically, that this is uh, happens within days rather than weeks. Yeah, because they don't deserve another two, three days. It it has to be imminent and it has to be done now. You can use my face if you want. You can use my face. This man here said he's the Chief Federal Postal Court Judge and he has sent me to arrest you, the Prime Minister, President, Garda, Police Officer, whoever it is, because you are harboring criminals and using corporate instruments to harvest people. You can use my face. Nobody in the history in the world has ever done that for you. I'm doing it for you because I put my words where my face is. Wow. I'm speaking for myself because I speak for myself. I'm not speaking about Irene or Hugh or anybody else. Myself. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. My wow. love and understanding to you both. Thank you very much for sharing this to the world. You know, I consider Irene a woman and Hugh a man. Anything less is just a legal fiction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.